Hi everyone, Tramthony Stantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Matt Champion album, Mika's Laundry. Here we have a new LP from rapper, singer, and songwriter Mr. Matt Champion, a Texas native who was once a part of the now-defunct boy band known as Brockhampton, whose unceremonious end back in 2022 feels like a lifetime ago for some reason, maybe because the writing was on the wall for a while, as eventually breaking up has been a part of the Brock Hampton narrative uh, really since the group blew up. And seeing the group start to unravel just before their 2018 record iridescence only seemed to bring on this inevitable point faster. Now, another inevitability is that various members of the group would start dropping solo material, which also hasn't been going as planned per se, if there even was a plan. Of course, Kevin Abstract recently dropped a solo LP with not just new music, but a new sound and direction too. However, he kind of already had a a head start in the music career department. While there have been some solo tracks here and there from various members of the group, more formal, lengthier projects have been few and far between. However, Matt Champion here has managed to launch a full-length album into orbit on RCA Records with a handful of teaser tracks too. And honestly, it kind of sounds like he's on the search for a sound, trying a little bit of everything in the process. Take the lead single from this thing, Aphid, for example, which is a feel-good piece of bedroom alt R&B, where Matt is really showing off his vocal chops even through a few layers of pitch-corrected harmonies. And I think it's a great tune, even if the vocal processing is a bit heavy-handed. There's a good Dijon feature on the track, too, which is good, because I think if Matt didn't include Dijon in <laughs> this track, he would get called out for ripping the guy off, as he really does seem inspired by his sound here. So contrast this song with the following Deep Cut Steel featuring Dora Jar, where you have a bit of 80s yuppie pop revivalism a la 1975, but with a slightly lo-fi twist. And while it's cute and it's groovy, it's maybe not Matt's strong suit. And there are other places I can go if I want to hear this sort of thing. Meanwhile, the opening track, Green, is an adorable bit of woozy, loose lo-fi hip-hop with drippy little synth notes tumbling down through the mix that underscore these very moody, introspective vocal passages from Matt, with him saying, you you would always get shy for me, you ain't ever gonna ride for me, in the back with no seatbelt, always tell how she felt. But maybe the most attention-grabbing thing about this track is how Matt stretches his vocals out into the squeakiest upper reaches of his vocal range in order to pull off the hook of the song. Alabama Blue? Oh, bless you. Thank you. But uh, yeah, quite a range of vibes and styles flowing throughout the first three tracks on this record. And Matt continues to road test a bunch of different ideas from here. With G-Biv, we have some heavy, dark industrial hip hop with some trap style hi-hats, a lot of spare and repetitive bars on it too. I could actually kind of imagine this song being a very hardcore cut that could land on a Brockhampton album. But the structure of the song is a bit lopsided as it kind of ends out of nowhere. Meanwhile, the song Purify sees Matt back in his R&B bag, and while the nuanced swells of keys and vocal harmonies are nice, I think the vocals come across too disengaged, too manipulated to really stand out and grab my attention. The whole thing really breezes by, which is a shame because a lot of the instrumental ideas are beautiful, and I know Matt is capable of a standout vocal performance. There are similar shortcomings on the song Code Red too, and to switch things up again, Matt also flirts with more of a singer-songwriter direct on the song Dogfish, with some mostly nude guitars, fiery, rambling lead vocals. Hilariously, the whole thing kind of reminds me of Counting Crows or something along those lines. But once again on this track, we get hit with a fizzled out ending, and uh, musically it doesn't really blossom beyond the groove and musical themes it establishes in the first leg. Because for sure, Matt does have an expressive voice, he is picking some evocative production here, he has a good sense of melody and rhythm too. But on this record, there is a serious lack of follow-through on the songwriting side, which I think is really my biggest issue with the album overall as I listen to it over and over. Actually, the best written and structured songs on the entire LP are the three singles Matt teased toward the album with, including Slug, which is a great piece of weirdo synth funk that has this amazing shot of falsetto vocal harmonies uh, with a just a, a great upward slide. Uh -huh. 
I can't even hit it, it's nuts. Then there's also Slow Motion, which is a low-key, beautiful, head-nodding bit of throwback dance pop with some speedy, stuttering beats and a great vocal feature from Jenny of Blackpink. When I first heard this track, I wasn't super impressed with it and Jenny's inclusion felt a little out of place, but hearing it more, they actually do have a lot more vocal chemistry than I originally thought. But yeah, beyond these songs, I'm hearing a lot of good ideas. I'm hearing uh, some bursts of emotion, but uh, when it comes to structuring these tracks, out, I'm just left wanting more. Whether Matt's delivering something with a cute 80s flair on Aren't You Excited, or if he's taking his knack for R&B tunes in an even looser and wilder direction on Everybody Likes You. Overall, in my opinion, this record shows quite a bit of promise and proves just how little of Matt's range and talent we were hearing in the context of Brockhampton. There is clearly a lot more to him than maybe even some of his biggest fans thought, because the vocals, the rapping, the lyrics are all pretty solid, and again, he's making very good creative production choices. There is a lot of aesthetic and creative consistency on this record, even if uh, he's aiming for a lot of different styles and genres across the track list. But really, again, it's the brief and uh, anemic songs and just lack of gratifying structure that leaves a lot of these tracks uh, feeling kind of underwhelming. And if Matt could build on that going forward, he will have an even better album coming down the pipe. Feeling a light to decent six on this one, Transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or a link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Matt Champion, uh, forever.